On today's episode, Ryan Blaney has a big family, 17 year olds are still emotional, and I got a mic arm. Welcome back to the Break Hard Show. I'm Matt. We had a packed weekend of racing at Iowa Speedway. We had the 24 hours of Le Mans, which is in France. And, well, IndyCar was off. Formula One was off. But that didn't stop us from having really good on-track action. A little bit of a different setup this week, trying something different out with the Break Hard Show desk. Moved out of the way. Have a mic arm now right here. I'm not going to caress that again because it felt hey, weird. Yep. And I apologize for that. However, we did have a very exciting weekend for the NASCAR series out at Iowa Speedway. We had the ARCA series on Friday night, the Xfinity series on Saturday, and the NASCAR Cup series on Sunday. Starting off with the Cup series race, it was way better than I think any of us anticipated after finding out that they repaved the bottom two lanes. I said it in another video before, hand up, my apologies to NASCAR and ISC, was not aware of your repave game because that was a hundred times better than what we expected it to be. At the end of the day, with a repave, you go into it thinking, yeah, this isn't going to be very good, is it? Because it's typically a bottom feeder racetrack, single lane, not very entertaining. Wrong. Iowa was actually very entertaining. Now I want them to repave the entire racetrack, do the rest of it, because I think if they do that, then maybe we can move up the track, get up to the wall, and create multiple different lanes. So I was really pleased with that. Uh, we saw it in the ARCA race on Friday night, and I even tweeted on Friday night, I was like, hey, there's multiple lanes here. This could be good, right? Um, obviously, it's ARCA, you get some kids there that will try to run different lanes just because they don't know any better, which isn't good. It's not. That's not bad. That's not good. Uh, it's how you learn, which is totally fine. The Saturday Xfinity race, like, okay, we're cooking a little bit now. This is actually pretty good. And then Sunday, yeah, it was way better than expected. So again, my apologies to the people at NASCAR ISC Iowa Speedway. You guys did a good job. Now, after the IndyCar race in July, go ahead and repave the whole thing. Let's just go ahead and get that done. Let it sit for basically a year until they go back. And I think that it would be good to go. Ryan Blaney ends up winning the race. He had 80 family members there. And uh, if you didn't know that, NBC was going to tell you that they had 80 family members there wearing gray shirts. And on the off chance that you potentially did forget that, he did have 80 family members there at the racetrack, which Rick Allen was beating into our heads like he was Mike Joy earlier this year at Martinsville telling us about the Hendrick 40th anniversary and the 1,500 employees that were outside of turn two. And they kept going back to them. Over and over and over again to the point where you're like, I think I might work at Hendrick. Do I have a 401k at Hendrick? I think I'm part of this family at this point. So it was cool that Blaney had a lot of family members there. His mom is from Des Moines, which isn't far from Newton, Iowa. Not Des Moines. It is Des Moines. Uh, if you haven't been to Iowa, they will educate you very quickly. Uh, but Ryan Blaney becomes the Iowa Cup Series Corn Star of the Weekend, uh, winning out in the first in the inaugural race. Penske just has this real knack of winning inaugural races at this point with one of their cars. It wasn't Logano this time, it was Ryan Blaney. Instead, super solid race overall. Blaney led 200 laps of the race, over 200 laps. Kyle Larson maybe probably had the fastest car of the race. He and Daniel Suarez got tied up on a restart there at the uh, start of stage three. Uh, at the end of the day, it was a racing incident, Charles Leclerc incident. Uh, wasn't malicious on Suarez's part. Unfortunately, did take out probably the fastest car there. And it's not very often that like Cliff Daniels will acknowledge the fact that the five car is easily the fastest car out there. But when Larson got upset with the contact from Denny Hamlin, which of course wasn't intentional either, Denny got out after the race and was like, yeah, I didn't mean to hit him. Um, didn't wreck him, just didn't mean to hit him. He said, yeah, Larson was mad about that. He's like, go ask Denny Spotter what the F that was for. And Cliff was like, no, we're not going to do that. It was an unfortunate situation. We have the fastest car here by a ridiculous amount. And he was right. They were absolutely flying. I mean, they pitted because he thought he had a tire issue uh, on the rear of the car. They pitted. And he goes from 30th to 5th in like 40 laps. Dude was absolutely booking on Sunday night. And yeah, unfortunate situation, right? He goes three wide. Uh, Brad Keselowski on the top, he in the middle, Daniel Suarez on the bottom, Suarez gets loose, gets off throttle, tries to catch it, gets back in the throttle, hits the five car, spins him out, turns him into the outside wall, uh, collecting Denny Hamlin in the process, ironically, and ends Larson's night, essentially. He went in, pitted, uh, went to the garage, fixed it, came back out, uh, multiple laps down, was never going to be in contention after that. Denny actually did get back on the lead lap, and then I believe went another lap down after that again, but damage was already done after the race Suarez was like yeah I hit him in the moment Suarez said yeah I don't think I caused that which is I mean what of course you caused it you were the guy that hit him 
That makes no sense at all. It's like a pitcher saying, oh, I didn't hit the batter. Well, dude, you're the only one throwing the baseball. How else did the batter get hit? Yeah, of course you hit him. So after the race, he sees a replay and he was like, yeah, he's like, I made contact. Didn't want to make contact. Last thing I want to do is take out one of my Chevy teammates. And then he was like, but the six was probably pinching the five down. Who's pinching me down. And it's like, okay, now we're just passing the blame on here. But racing incident at the end of the day, uh, it happens. It sucks to see the, fa the fastest car get taken out because I think the battle between the five and the 12 could have been potentially really good. Uh, as that race progressed overall good race uh some questionable calls from nascar race control over what's a caution what's not a caution that still seems to be up in the air a little bit there uh the daniel hemmer caution sent uh adam stevens just ballistic he was going absolutely insane like he was lewis black on a rant there for half a second so i'm glad he came back down to earth and I get it. I get the frustration behind that. Absolutely. And then you have Eric Jones not getting a caution, even though he's playing like real life Frogger trying to get back across the racetrack with a really damaged car. Noah Gragson, uh, he had the Bass Pro Shop sponsorship, but he was getting hunted down by the Dollar Tree uh, car, which was his old car. So a little bit of a reversal action there gets taken out. Didn't ever hit anything. Uh, they never hit the wall, but NASCAR was pretty quick on the trigger. And I can understand that one because they did appear to be headed towards the wall. They just never actually made it there. So at the end of the day, racing was really good top to bottom, multiple different lanes, didn't have to hear about aero dependency whatsoever, which I think is a major win for everyone involved there. And yeah, they should definitely go back in 2025. I want to see the Cup Series back at Iowa in 2025, fully repaved track. Let's see just how good this racing can be uh, at this point. So yeah, I'm pleasantly surprised and definitely excited for it. NBC, of course, had its first race of the season, and it was refreshing to kind of have a different view of the sport, right? Fox does broadcast one way, whether you like that or not, that's the way that they do it. NBC does it another way. I would argue that NBC's way of doing it is a bit more professional. You get a lot more insight, too, uh, especially some stories that you wouldn't hear. They were locked in with uh, the 20 pit box and adam stevens as well as the seven spit uh pit box not spit box that's bad pit box of uh corey lajoy with ryan sparks as crew chief up there and that added a really cool dynamic to the race from that angle we got a uh, richard boswell story that definitely would not have come if we had this race on fox as well i did see some critiques of of the broadcast from people were like they never showed the choose which they're right there uh there were a couple times where they missed things they didn't say until the end of the stage break to watch all the people all the drivers cross the line at least the top 10 so yeah there are definitely things that like we would torch fox for and have torched fox for for not doing that nbc seemingly got away with because i guess it was their first race of the season but at the end of the day those are things that they should be showing so hopefully they do get that corrected going forward but just the way that the booth talks about the race and calls the race, I think is better. Um, it, it It's more informative for the fans. It treats the fans as equals in a sense and not like they're trying to dumb it down and educate them. Well, not even really educate, but kind of just dumb it down each week. So there's two ways of doing a broadcast. Some people like the way Fox does it. I see it in the comments all the time. Some people like the way NBC does it. It's kind of a personal preference at this point. Uh, and yeah, I think NBC did a really good job. We'll get to a Fox, a positive Fox broadcast thing in a moment. The Saturday Xfinity Series race, top to bottom, Xfinity, of course, remains, um, as the kids say, goaded. It's just the best series that NASCAR currently has on offer. You have uh, Sam Mayer picking up his second win of the season. Six win in the last 29 races for Sam. And I'll be honest, I know this has been talked about now since his win. His celebration is very cringe worthy. I got goosebumps. I was so cringed out by it watching it. Him getting out of the car, doing the Superman chest open, which showed off the Superman logo with his initials in it because it's Sam Mayer, SM Superman. Get it? Yep, got it. Okay, glad that we're done with that education standpoint. So, yeah, I, uh, it's frustrating because it was like, uh, I don't love that at all. He kind of, I don't get it with like the younger kids. Obviously, I'm not in my early 20s or teens or whatever but he was like emoting like all these kids have like an emote and he was running to get the flag like he was a non-playable character everything about it was just really odd and maybe it's just because i'm not in that age range so i think it's weird i thought i had toothpaste on my mouth um so yeah i didn't love it at all but hey he wins 
So that's what matters. After the race, he said that he was really pissed off that he's not involved in more of the NASCAR Cup Series silly season talk, which I can understand, right? Winner Winning six of the last 29 Xfinity Series races is certainly a pretty good stat. Um, so he definitely deserves to be involved in those. I think Sam's been in the Xfinity Series for so long at this point, and his progression hasn't been as quick as like a Ty Gibbs let's say, that maybe people are starting to view him as a pay-only driver, which he is a pay driver. Don't get me wrong. He's in that ride because his family writes a check for it. But I think he's definitely talented enough to not have to be a pay driver, but you have to kind of flirt with that line. It's the Marcus Erickson and IndyCar situation where it's like, I'm talented enough to not have to bring budget. You should have to go find budget for me. I deserve to be paid. But at the same time, people are like, yeah, but you continually bring budget, so we're going to keep doing that. Like, why would we do the heavy lifting when you do it for us? So I think for Sam... Definitely is talented enough to be a driver that's getting paid, deserves to probably have a shot at the Cup Series, whether that be 25 or 26. He's definitely talented enough to be in the Cup Series, just maybe needs a different celebration. Chandler Smith led a lot of that race, ends up coming home in seventh. He led um, like 130 laps of that race, probably had the best car out there. When it comes to the 81 car, if it's at Richmond, Phoenix, Iowa, um, maybe even New Hampshire next weekend. He's going to be really good. Everywhere else, not so much. So if he can just make his way to Phoenix, Chandler Smith has a good shot at the championship. They got a lot of work to do to try to figure out the rest of their speed. And they have had speed at other places, but certainly not uh, what they've had at these um, short, well, I don't know. Iowa is like the smallest intermediate or the biggest short track. So somewhere in that range. But anything that's around like a mile and under, they have really good speed. They just seemingly haven't been able to close it out. So it'll be interesting to see what he can do there. Sheldon Creed seemed like he might be in position to win his first NASCAR Xfinity Series race. I believe he has like eight second place finishes or nine, something along those lines. And he did Sheldon Creed things and did not win it. So that I think at this point, we're just never going to see a Sheldon Creed win. It's like Daniel Hemrick, right? Uh, we never thought Daniel Hemrick would win a NASCAR Xfinity Series race or NASCAR race of any kind. And he finally does that in the championship race. But I just don't even know if Sheldon can get to that championship race this year. So we'll have to wait and see on that one the rest of the Xfinity series race had uh, some tire issues Justin Allgaier got caught out by it. Austin Hill did as well Shane Van Gisbergen had a very no grags in Chicago street race type of weekend a very forgettable he probably never wants to go back to Iowa in his life he'll be back there next year probably in the cup series but for SVG I always wonder about like SVG or even some of the IndyCar drivers when they come over like did SVG ever think growing up that he'd be racing in the middle of Iowa in June yeah, June. I forgot what month it was for a second. Kind of like an IndyCar, like Theo Porcher. Growing up in France, did he ever think he'd be running an IndyCar race at Barber Motorsport Park in Alabama? No. It's weird how life works out like that. So, Xfinity race, really good again, top to bottom. Justin Allgaier had a bad weekend. Not Justin Allgaier. Well, Justin Allgaier did have a bad weekend. AJ Allmendinger had a bad weekend as well, wrecked out in both the Xfinity and Cup Series races. He was very concerned about his balls. Um... He hit so hard he was concerned about them. He's going to have his wife check them out, which, yeah, I mean, I don't think she's a medical professional, but she can probably has experience with them. So that makes sense at the end of the day. A very AJ Allmendinger um, thing to say. Friday night, we had the NASCAR. Well, no, not NASCAR. Technically a NASCAR series. We had the ARCA series. I'm so accustomed to just saying NASCAR all the time. We had the ARCA series race from Iowa Speedway. And again, phenomenal race top to bottom call me crazy but i think arca might be starting to get a little bit better obviously arca has been dominated for a few years by venerini and joe gibbs racing essentially and it's not been very good there's like three competitive cars most weekends well now the 2018 the pinnacle racing team uh which is the chevy kind of development team out there has been bringing one sometimes two cars to the racetrack with really formidable drivers in it and really fast race cars to go head to head with venerini and with joe gibbs racing and then we saw the same thing happen on friday Friday night. William Swalch in the 18 car for Joe Gibbs Racing went head to head with uh, Connor Zilich in the 28 car. And of course, Connor Zilich is one of the hottest names in racing right now. Has an incredibly diverse racing resume, which the internet got very mad at me for pointing out that his racing resume is more diverse than Max Verstappen, which it 100% is. He's driven multiple different cars, won in multiple different cars and series. Max has only ever driven an open wheel car. And I'm not taking anything away from that. Max is a great open wheel driver. But when it comes to diversity of resume, Connor Zilich has a better diverse re racing resume than Max. But on Friday night in the ARCA race with 24 laps to go, Connor Zilich, William Swatch, they were the class of the field all night. And there's a restart. 
Connor's on the outside, goes down in the corner. William Swallows just doesn't even attempt to turn in on the corner at first. Just absolutely drives into the side of the 28 car of Connor. And then coming now out of the corner down the back stretch, tries to hook him in the left rear. And it's like, what is going on here? After the race, Fox went down and talked to William Swalich. And he was like, yeah, I lost a lot of respect for Connor there when he jumped the restart. And they were like, so you ran into him because of that? And he goes, yeah, pretty much. Okay. And then went and talked to Connor. He's like, I don't know what the kid's deal is. He's like, I'll have to go talk to him and try to figure it out. Connor had a much more composed interview than William Swalich. And at the end of the day, they're 17 years old, right? They're emotional. They don't have the critical thinking skills. They don't have the control of their emotions like an adult does. And that's why I have to laugh when people are like, let these guys go up to cup or whatever before they're 18. No, you absolutely cannot. Because they just, again, not that the difference between the next four months is going to really make a huge difference, but there's something about putting 17 or younger out there. And it's like, ah, these kids are just too emotional at this point to to make you know the jump to a bigger track of course they can run short uh short tracks and road courses but yeah no they there's a reason that there are rules in place and i'm fine with that it's like the fia bending the rules to allow kimmy antonelli to make his f1 debut before his 18th birthday yeah max verstappen did it the reason they put the rule in there is because they're like yeah 17 year olds probably shouldn't be out here on track and it's again just some of the lack of control they have over their emotions at times and i get it some things probably just won't change over the next four months i mean austin hill is 30 years old and he still acts like this at times so yeah it, it goes on but yeah i don't know william swalsh i think left a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths so yeah we'll have to wait and see what goes on with him but i think connor zillich at this point is his stock keeps rising. I think William Swalch has maybe leveled off where uh, his talent level will be at. We've seen him in some truck series races, and he's looked pretty pedestrian for the most part. Um, and that's not to say that he won't get better with time, and he's going to make some extended starts this year as well, and we'll see what happens there. But he certainly is a kid that brings a big budget. And I'm wondering a little bit, too, if the equipment and how good it is in the Arca series masks some of his... Um, lack of skill set as a driver like does that cover up some of the deficiencies he has and I think it maybe does a little bit where Connor Zilich can get in and he's been able to win in literally everything that he's gotten in at this point uh, will likely probably win a truck race uh, at some point as well so moving on to no there's no Stephen Wallace dumb move of the race this weekend instead I'm giving out a praise of the week I know doesn't happen very often but Eric Brennan called the ARCA race on Friday night on FS1 with Phil Parsons they called it remote and it was maybe one of the best broadcasts Fox has had all year if not the best broadcast Eric Brennan is the voice of the cars tour and he brought a level of excitement a new voice and a ton of knowledge to the ARCA race on Friday night and it was so refreshing to see I know the internet was absolutely uh, head over heels with him calling the race. And if you're Fox, you absolutely have to call this guy and try to get him onto the truck broadcast full time next year or something. Sorry, Dale Jr. You're going to lose him on the car store side and flow racing. The guy is just too talented to to not be on one of the big series. So I hope Fox does make the right decision here. Gives him a call because, like I said, it's amazing what an excited voice can do for a broadcast. And Eric Brennan did just that absolutely love to see it moving on to um a little silly season talk real quick uh there's gonna be a lot of talk about silly season over the next couple of weeks i think we have a pretty good idea on where things are maybe laying out at the moment chase Briscoe go to the 19 that's going to happen he'll replace martin Truex jr whether it's the 19 or the 18 next year i think that remains to be seen but chase Briscoe is headed to joe gibbs racing um in 2025 the 21 car uh, the Wood Brothers. Obviously, that was a Chase Briscoe spot for him to go. He's leaving the Ford camp. Who goes there? Justin Haley's name has been heavily linked to the 21 car. Him leaving Rick Ware to go over to that 21. I think that's a great get if they're able to get him. The kid's been absolutely uh, driving the wheels off of that 51 car in uh, for Rick Ware Racing this year in the Cup Series. So I think that's a really good landing spot for him if things all work out there uh, for, for um, Justin. When it comes down to the FRM seats, one of those is going to Cole Custer, it sounds like. The other one is up in the air. Is it going to be Josh Berry? Is it going to be Noah Gragson? Noah seemingly has a good backing from Bass Pro Shops. Now that Martin's gone, it appears that a lot of that money will go to will go to um, Noah Gragson. Does he end up at FRM? Does he end up potentially at a third RCR car? Uh, remains to be seen if RCR is going to buy a third charter. I think that's a big ask. 
unless of course it's being subsidized by somebody else which takes me to the 2311 topic uh the prevailing thought amongst people uh that i've talked to and i think some people have seen this as well on social is that riley herps will be in that third 2311 car in 2025 because his family is helping to purchase the charter with 2311 racing it'll be a joint partnership for that charter um and then i'm interested to see how the business you know model is broken down for that charter will it be a type of thing where the family you know buys it and then over like the course of three to four maybe five years 2311 buys that charter back from them and then at the end of the deal they fully own that charter could be but riley herps to 2311 very much seems like it is something that is going to happen there and then Cobblish is not leaving rcr as much as he wants to go back to hendrick as much as he wants to go back to gibbs he has an option for 2025 which has been picked up by the team and he's a no talk clause so i just don't see him getting out of that and i don't see rc letting him get out of that barring you know a brinks truck backing up uh to the shop in welcome north carolina it doesn't seem like that's happening so that's a little silly season update In terms of looking ahead for the next week, we have the NASCAR Cup and Xfinity Series at New Hampshire, Saturday for the Xfinity Series, Sunday for the Cup Series, uh, the one trip to the Northeast this year. And then we also have the IndyCar Series out at Laguna Seca for the Monterey Grand Prix. And then we also have the six hours of the Glen for the IMSA Series. And we have Formula One in Barcelona for the Spanish Grand Prix. If you like that track, enjoy it because it will be headed to Madrid in 2026. That date will at least. So let me know in the comments what you think about the racing this weekend. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram and Twitter at Break Hard Blog.